Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look and see how we're able to set up a Liferate workspace. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a brand new instance of Liferate Developer Studio so that we can start clean. We don't have anything in the way. So let's go ahead and see how we're able to do this. A number of different ways to do this. I'm only going to be showing one. So from here, I'm going to head over to File, followed by New, and then Liferate Workspace Project. From here, I'm going to give a project name. Name of the project will be training dash workspace. We'll keep all of the defaults using Gradle. The life rate version will be 7.2 and so on. I'll go ahead and then click finish. Right, we'll give it a few moments here, make sure everything loads up properly. And once it does, I'll go ahead and expand out the training workspace. And we're going to head over to our Gradle.properties. I have my line numbers enabled. Again, you can enable them clicking on this kind of light gray area, followed by show line numbers. So the first thing we need to do is here on line number 14, we're going to uncomment and then change the value from false to true. There is this special token that Liferay looks for to ensure that you have the proper permissions in order to actually download a Liferay bundle. From here, we're going to scroll down and on line 57 is where we're going to change the URL. In order to download a Liferay DXP bundle, it does take a little bit of work. So from here on the URL begins api.liferay.com. It'll then be slash downloads with an S slash portal, followed by the version number. Now this part can be a little bit tricky depending on which version we're working with. So right now I'm going to be downloading Liferay 7.2 SP1. So the syntax will look a little something like this. And then the last part is the, the name of the bundle that you want to download. So oftentimes in order to do this or to get the initial setup for the first time, I'll head over to our help center, download a bundle and then get the URL. So I did that earlier. And then this is the fully qualified name of it. So life rate DXP 7210.1 lines up with this version right here. Uh, we don't need the SP one, so we're okay. And then make sure the file format is correct, tar.gz. And then this is always the tricky part, uh, that timestamp. So once you have something like this, you can copy mine to download the exact version that I'm using. Once we have that, we'll then head over to the Gradle tasks on the right hand side, expanding out the training workspace, heading over to bundle, followed by init bundle. If you have a token, the token will be registered and everything will be good. If you do not have a token, right, it'll prompt you for your email and password. Be careful, the password will show up as plain text within the console and you can clear it out afterwards. So nobody over your shoulder will see that. So the bundle is downloading here. Sometimes you might get an error. If you do, it's typically a syntax error somewhere on this URL. So again, be careful there. So we'll give this a few moments as it's doing its thing. Okay, so for me, the process has finished up. We're gonna give a few more seconds here to see if it'll show up. Typically it doesn't. Uh, what I'm looking for is a folder over here on the left-hand side of my training workspace called bundles. So in our lectures and our discussions, we discussed how we can have a life rate bundle within the training workspace. Uh, this is one way in which we were able to do so. So I'll go ahead and refresh. I always like to do the Gradle refresh first. You'll see the process going through at the bottom right, and then we'll see that bundles folder show up. Uh, this is a full Liferay bundle. Everything that you would expect in one is here. So now that we have the Liferay bundle within our training workspace, we saw how easy it was to set up the workspace. From here, we're gonna set up the server. So down here at the bottom left under servers, we can click this link to set up the new server, giving us a little bit more space. I'm going to head over to Liferay Inc. And then we're in Liferay 7.x. From here, we can click next. Now from here, this is where we have a number of different options. If you already have an existing Liferay instance or Liferay bundle that you want to point to, you can browse to it and then point to it and then it'll show up here. In this situation, we're going to be pointing to the Liferay bundle that's within our training workspace. So I'll go ahead and click browse. 
And let's see, in here, going to the training workspace, then I will select the bundles folder right here. Right, it picks it up, sees that it is a Tomcat bundle, and then from there we can go ahead and click finish. And there we go, we have our setup server. So again, there's a lot of different options here. What I could have done after testing is I can delete this bundle. I can then zip up the training workspace and then send it to somebody else. Let them know that they'll need to init the bundle, that they'll need a token, and then they can get up and running really quickly with their Lifeway workspace. If I already have some modules or some applications built out, right, everything is already here. So let's go ahead and finish up. We're gonna start the Liferay server down here. At the bottom left, we'll highlight it or click it, and then you have this green play button to start the server. The server does typically take a couple minutes, so feel free to grab some water, get up, stretch, check your email, but the Liferay startup times have been faster and faster. I'm here on a Windows machine. It typically takes about two, two to three minutes or so. Uh, I do work on a Mac on most days and on a Mac it's really quick. We're talking like 45 seconds to a minute and a half the most. Uh, so our startup times are getting quite fast. You can imagine how fast that is on a, on a dedicated server. All right, so very good. We see 154,000 milliseconds. That's about two minutes and some change. So about in the two, three minute range. So not bad. So my browser didn't kick up. I'm going to go incognito just in case I have anything saved. We'll go localhost 8080. So a number of different configurations that we have here. So basic configuration here allows us to configure an admin user and an admin email. Test.liferate.com is usually the default that we have. If you want to set up an external database, you can do that. I'm going to be using my SQL later on. So you can do it through this basic configuration screen, making sure you have the proper uh, JDBC connectors, the proper JDBC URL, username and password, and so on. And the last thing we need to do is deploy an activation key. So I'm going to head over to where my activation key is. I'll copy it using control C. And then over in our bundles folder, you can place it in the deploy folder and keep your eye here. Or I should say, keep your eyes here on the console. You'll see that the activation key is processing. And then it is registered. So our DXP instance is registered. We can click finish configuration and it'll bring us to a placeholder for the terms of use. You'll have to wait a few moments for the activation key to deploy. And uh, by deploying, whatever we do place in this folder will disappear. So that's why I use copy and paste. So finishing up the basic configuration, terms of use, we'll go ahead and click I agree. We'll set a new password. I usually use the password test. Right, very simple, very easy, same name. Today, my father's middle name will also be test. And then that finishes up the basic configuration of Liferay. All right, so very good. So we've seen how to create a Liferay workspace from scratch, how to bring in an instance of Liferay, start it up and get it registered. So that wraps it up for this video and I will see you in the next video.